family. Happy 10th episode of the Queen Bonnie Talks podcast. We here. We with it. We with the vibes. It's your favorite girl. Your favorite healer checking in. It's Bonnie. How y'all doing? I hope y'all having a phenomenal year. Um, even though it's coming to a close, um, we are pulling up in November. We are pulling up in November for, you know, all the family ceremonies, all the family rituals. I'm here for it. Um, but October was the one, okay? No new news there. You know how October goes. So we had Queen Tober on the Queen Bonnie platforms, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Pinterest, on Twitter. I was with the shits, okay? In every most respectful way possible because your girl does what she wants. No new news, okay? So, um, in doing what I want and in the season of October, let's just get into some things, okay? So, October, we came to the end of retrograde in like seven planets. How y'all doing? I was pressed. I ain't gonna even hold you. It was a lot of shit going awry that I wasn't even letting, even acknowledging it going awry because I couldn't give a fuck because retrograde had me really like, and retrograde like, okay. I feel like retrograde gets this bad connotation, this bad rap for being just that bitch, okay? And that's fine. That's fine, y'all could call it that. But really, what makes retrograde so pressing is that retrograde is, I don't wanna say the test, but it's the test. It's that moment where you think you've learned all this shit over the last quarter of the year, right? And retrograde comes back in every department and say, well, did you or did you not? Did you or did you not? Because sometimes we think we did, but we did not. Sometimes we think we learned our lesson, but when it comes to that lesson or that blessing being tested, we get a little wavery. We forget like we didn't know where we came from. We forget that we already worked through this. So it's not just about learning the lesson, but when it's time for that lesson to re-arise, do you know what you need to know to be able to progress past that lesson? Are you pushed back five more steps because you refuse to do different? Retrograde be on it. <laughs> Retrograde be on it, in it <laughs> and all up in us. And I think that the season that comes after retrograde, those cold winter months, none of this is on accident. So you get tested and then you have these cold winter months that are very reflective and um, have a lot of solitude and a lot of um, kind of really close knitness. You're, this is a lot of family time at these, in, these cold winter months. There's a lot of Comfort, comforting foods and comforting going on because sometimes we need that after we realize that we didn't do or didn't progress as much as we thought we had. Sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need to reflect. Sometimes we need to be comforted. Sometimes we need that support of our family. So retrograde. Then we had spooky season. Who know? You know, hocus pocus, hocus focus. Okay, that's what I've been saying all fucking October. Like. Is it all a game? Is it just magic or is it, are they, is it sleight of hand? Are they not really focusing on what's really happening and they think that it's magic? Because you really focused in creating miracles out of fucking thin air, but you know, hocus pocus, it's nothing. So spooky season was great. Um, I think there has been a large rise in really creepy shows and not creepy as in like sci-fi, gory type shit. Creepy like, we really, media has really, really progressed to where there are a lot of shows about wild shit. Like, first Dahmer came out. Then after Dahmer, then you had all these, Netflix has like at least 10 to 15 different shows about like 
murderers, about serial killers, about stalkers, and they're about their perspective and getting their viewpoint. Even with me, I never watched Dahmer. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not a fan. I'm not into it. And I'm not into it because we're fetishizing and romanticizing that this motherfucker could get away with this shit because of racism. I don't want to watch that shit. I don't want to see that shit. You got to be careful during spooky season, during all seasons, but spooky season most specifically. Watch what you intake. Watch what you intake. Because we doing a lot of stuff in the spirit of Halloween, but really it's just showing how fucked up in the head we really is. Why would you want to watch that? Why would you want to watch a series fetishizing a man who got away with killing 17 people because they were black and or people of color even if they wasn't black they were asian native american they were people of color but we want to watch that why do you want to watch that why do you want to see that why do you want to be a part of that you know so spooky season was interesting um it was Hoodoo Heritage Month, you know, your girls of faith. Um, and you know what's crazy is that I have gotten really out of the tradition of doing things in the timing of the world, which I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but also I've gotten more into just making magic every day. So I don't feel like, oh, it's this holiday. I need to make magic. Nah, I'm making magic every day. Baby, we living with intention every day. We moving on purpose every day. So that has been great for me. And I've really enjoyed Hoodoo Heritage Month. Um, just thriving in that who do recognition baby we are magic we are magic and can't nobody as hard as they try try to steal your magic from you unless you motherfucking nothing because baby once you take a nap your words are magic the way you move the way you <laughs> the way the move of your hair the breath in your body the roll of your eyes the movements of your neck baby it's all magic and once you get into that, you playing with yourself, not me. <laughs> once you, once you, once you, if you ignoring that, that every breath, every move, every, it's all magic. And once you get into your own magic and you realize like, oh, we on to some, baby. We be cooking with grease. We, we been cooking with grease. And you know what? Also, uh retrograde so i think it's interesting that in the month of october so many relationships go through turbulence i think that's so interesting like this is just me recapping october and recapping like what i really have noticed this october i've been noticing you know the weird spooky shit i've been noticing you know the hoodoo, the hoodoo heritage the thriving the but also the people being called to do something only because right now it's trending when really you can make magic every day so you don't gotta wait till hoodoo heritage month you know what i'm saying retrograde it's, october's a big month for retrograde so i think it's crazy or really more so very interesting that during this high time of retrograde, all these relationships are experiencing all this turbulence when everyone is going through this, like, really reflecting but testing time. I think that's so interesting. I think that is so interesting. And I think that, oh, my mom used to say to me when I was a little girl, if you do what you always done, you get what you always got. So that means if you don't want to have what you've always been having, then you're going to have to move different. So I think that same thing applies in our relationships. And it's not just romantic relationships, but friendships, parental relationships. Like when I tell you October was such an eventful month, baby, I can't make up all the things that happened in October if I tried. It was so eventful. It was so clearing to see the world in a new light. Very clearing. Um, for me, have I experienced turbulence in my relationships? I would say yes. I would say yes. I would say October was very turbulent for me and my personal relationships in my life. Mostly because 
I I don't feel the need to bottle my feelings no more. I don't feel the need to be silent because people can't handle what I have to say anymore. I don't feel the need to be anyone other than who the fuck I am and who the fuck I want to be. So in doing that, I've had some situations where I really had to speak my truth and talk about how niggas got me fucked up and how these bitches too and these motherfuckers over there and I like when you do this, but I don't like when you do this and I've really had to like just be transparent with my feelings because I've realized that bottling my feelings is not for me. It's, it might be for other folks, but it ain't for me. I don't like bottling my feelings. I don't like having to be this limited version because maybe I'm not digestible to you. Well, I hope y'all motherfuckers choke, to be honest, on all this character, personality, full-bodied experience. I hope you motherfucking choke or open your motherfucking throats and drink that bitch with some water because i'm not lightening up and i don't plan to and i don't want to so october has been very good for me and y'all know i'm a big advocate in owning your power and owning who you are what you are how you move how you want to move i'm big on that you don't gotta be digestible for these niggas they diet bad anyways Maybe they need to eat some roughage. Maybe they need to eat some shit that make them kind of shit themselves. Because y'all haven't been letting go of the bullshit. But I'm going to help you by keeping it one thou out 100% of the time. Whether you like it or not. And that doesn't mean that I'm never wrong. That doesn't mean I'm above correction. But that means I'm going to be honest about my shit. And I want someone honest about their shit with me. Like if you, if I hurt your feelings, if I step on your toes, let a, let a nigga know. And if you just sensitive and you don't like the way I deal with you, also let a nigga know this one lock is just like doing whatever she wants. And I'm a letter, okay? Um, let's get into the meat, okay? Let's get into the meat of the episode. So this episode, 10, 10, y'all know I love the numbers 10, 6. So those are real big for me. So I feel like when we got to episode 6, I was like, episode 6? I was screaming. I love six. I love ten. I love three. I love one. Anyways, besides the point. Um, so episode ten, we with the shits. We not letting it up. We not going nowhere. It's the Queen Lonnie Talks podcast. We at episode ten. Episode ten is about Eban. Um, y'all know we still doing the Adinkra series. Um, and we riding the wave. We going with the flow. We seeing what's next. And so right now, what's next in Adinkra is Eban. Um, so. You know, I made these paintings, little backstory I made. I created these paintings of different Adinkra symbols. Um, and the second painting that I made was Ebon. And Ebon means, let me look at my notes. Okay, so Ebon translates to fence and reflects the symbolism of love, safety, and security. The home is in the Akan tradition, which is where a bond comes from um, a dingra. These, these traditions are all overlapping. I really enjoy that. But um, in the Akan tradition, the home is a special place. Um, a home which is a home which typically has a fence around it is considered to be ideal as a residence. The fence symbolically separates and secures the family from the outside because of the security and protection the fence affords. The symbol is associated with security and the safety one finds in love. So when painting this, the themes that kept coming up to me as I was painting this is love is a boundary, the security that love provides, and the community aspect that you kind of have when you have the community aspect that a fence is in that. And if that makes sense, like a fence is like, is like your community. Your community will keep motherfuckers away from you. They will keep you navigated, near, uh, grounded, not narrow, grounded, keep you focused. Um, and a fence really does that. A fence keep you focused on your family, focused on your home, focused on what's going on inside these four walls. Um, so, mm. So in that, um, the last theme that I 
got when I was painting and these are the questions that arose and we're going to really work through them together and I'm going to answer them um, as part of this, as part of the community aspect of Ebon. I had some people from my community answer the question, what security does love offer you? Okay. And they kept it honest. So those are included in this episode and you will find a lot of them on social media as we get ready to launch this episode. So let's get into it. My answer is this. Um, when I think about romantic love, I don't really think about safety and security at first, but something that comes to mind is like when you love someone, you know that your heart is secure with them. You believe at least that as long as you have love for one another, your heart will not be hurt. Your feelings will not be hurt. You're safe. Um, your feelings are safe and secure in that way. Um, I would expect the person that I love, my partner, to make me feel safe in the physical sense as well. When I'm out in public and I'm with them, I know that can nobody walk up on me. Like, I know if something pops off, like, they're going to cover me. They're going to keep my best interests you know, align with their interests. If they're going to start running it, they're going to have me right with them. Like, that's what I think about with safety and security. Um, when I think about what, um, if love could offer me that. So, yeah. Uh, none. In my opinion, me personally. Um, I honestly don't feel like there's anything safe or secure about it. Like the whole thing is built on like hopes and shit. Yeah. Give me. Um, when I love somebody or someone loves me and I'm feeling down, I can always rely on that person to make me feel better. I don't have to tell you when I'm down, you don't want to see me down. Basically for me, when love means I always have that person in my corner. Like I can be going through it and they'll be there to help me to the best of their abilities. They're a reason, they're one more reason to get up in the morning and give me a purpose. They, when I can't remember why I'm doing what I'm doing, they're there to remind me and keep me on my shit. That's, that is what security and safety that love. What talking about, um, I would say that and any type of shit that I have, if there is love, that doesn't necessarily mean that I feel safe or that there is security there. That may be for that person, but not for me. Um, so safety and security to me, what love, real love for me would offer is a place where I am a person. I'm not a social construct or um, any form of gender norm, it is where I am just a being and I'm allowed to be that. I'm allowed to express and be weird and be all these forms of emotions and this baby and this brat and this adult and this queen of words. I'm allowed to be all the things that I am and they're all taken with grace, they're all taken in stride. And then in places where even when you know you're at fault and things are wrong, it's like, okay, I see you bitch. So where can we grow from here? Where can we go from here? Because this is not where you actually want to be, but I'll meet you where you at. And um, I think that those things are the most important because that's when true acceptance happens. That's what the safety and security is for me. It's acceptance. It's just knowing that when I'm with you, I'm me. And that's all there is to it. How does the love you are given in this life protect you? When you are low, do you count your blessings? Have you ever considered how the love of your spiritual court and higher self has protected you from unknown danger? How does the security you receive in life, whether it be from yourself or your community, sustain you in this life? How does the security of love make you more or less confident in yourself 
How does the security of love affect the need or the lack of the need to be validated by other people? So let's start, I'll start by answering, what securities does love offer you? And I would say the security that love offers me starts with myself. I'm a proud self-love advocate and I always tell people that you set the tone. You set the tone for how you want to be loved and the ways you want to be loved and, and the rhythm of how you want to be loved, of how you like to be loved. You set the standard. So in you setting the standard in your life for how you want to be loved, security for me, I feel like love is secure. I don't look for, back to the other questions that are more journal prompts for you to reflect about, um, I don't feel like I need validation from people. Because I know at the end of the day, if no one support me, I support me. If nobody got my back, I got my back. And that does not mean I'm an island. But that does not, your journey in life is not a conference call. Other motherfuckers may never get it. It's for you to get it. It's for you to be proud of. It's for you to understand. So if you doing that, you don't need every time Big Harry, Hank, and Joe to tell you that you're doing a good job. Because you know you're doing a good job. I know I'm doing a good job. I know I'm walking my purpose because I feel that shit. When motherfuckers be like, well, how you do everything? I don't know. It's in me, not on me, baby. I don't need that validation from other people. You, They may not get it. Well, how you run a YouTube and a podcast and you run a spiritual business, but you a ratchet. It's in me, not on me, baby. It ain't for everybody to get. It ain't for everybody to understand. Everybody may not get it. Everybody may not understand. And even if I spill it out to them in raw, plain ass English, they may still not never get it because that's not their business. So I feel like for me, love offers me so much security, but it starts with me. Not other people, not with what other people got going on. It starts right here with me and what I got going on. Um, so before... So y'all just got my real raw answer from the question, but I wrote that my answer was going to be love offers me the understanding that I am not alone or empty or unnecessary. It is in love that I found my power. It is in love that I found my strength. And that's some real talk. It's in love that like, I used to really think that I didn't have no feelings. And I used to like really close my feelings off. Like I really literally would not allow myself to feel anything. And it's in feeling that I found my power. It's in feeling that I'm like, y'all don't feel that? Like, when I tell you, living feels different now for me. Because I can feel the power in my hands. I can feel the power in my body. I can, I can, I feel life differently. I, baby, it's in feeling, it's in love that I found that I'm never alone. That I am fucking necessary necessary as fuck I think that well love offers both safety and security um whatever it is that you may love or that may love you back be it your craft and that's what you put your heart into be it that special person be it that family member be it your child I think that love is a is a covering of safety and security. Safety being a place to have someone to talk to, a place of being able to express yourself, whether it be with yourself, because self love is is a is a particular safety and security where you have to protect yourself and you have to care for yourself, or you have to care for that thing, or you have to protect that thing that is the safety that is the security in, in knowing in particular if we talk about romantic love when you when you love someone it's it's being able to find a person who understands your love languages and your safety in that you you don't have to question certain things you don't have to i don't know you have to explain yourself in certain things because people just get it Get it? That's what you say. <laughs> I think that where you find love is where you found trust, 
where you found a place where you could just be, where you find authenticity. I think you find authenticity in love. And with being authentic, you find comfort. And in being comfortable, what is that? You find safety in the environment, wherever the person that is your safety, that is your security. So I can't say, I can't say that the two aren't, aren't, aren't the same, but I can say that love offers you both. Love offers you a covering. And in that covering, you find safety, security, protection, openness, honesty, expression, creativity. You find everything. You find everything in love. But you don't find it until you find your self-love. And when you find self-love, you find all those things inside yourself. You find yourself protective of yourself. You find yourself secure in yourself and your being. You find yourself comfortable and bold and confident. Love offers confidence. Love offers boisterous, being proud. Not necessarily prideful, but just being proud. Just, I feel like I've said a lot. But, but I think that love offers a multitude of things. An abundance of love offers abundance of safety. An abundance of security. But I'm in love with love. And that's just my opinion. So, y'all don't ask me, but... That's what I got. Hi. Rain Chapman, the Black Unicorn Magical Mother here. And I am joining Queen Vani in her Queen-tober uh, escapade. <laughs> so the question that was asked is, what safety or security, or safety and security does love offer? And... To answer that, love offers both safety and security. Um, for me, it's it has been, and I no longer want it to be, <laughs> me depending on someone else to pour that love into me that I can't feel myself. My cup could be half full and could be cracked or broken and someone is trying to pour into me and it's still just pouring itself back out of the cup. And, you know, that's... That's where I'm at right now in my life. But it does offer a safety to know that you have someone to rely on, whether it be a significant other, whether it be a friend, whether it be a sister, a mother, whatever, to know that you can rely on someone or that you have someone that is a, a, a listening ear, someone you can just lean on, someone that will help you even when you don't want to ask for that help, even when you don't want to help yourself. Um, the security that it gives, I don't know, it's like a big warm hug. <laughs> Love to me is, again, it's that void. And though you want to pour into yourself, sometimes love from others, it, it definitely helps. It helps motivate that love for you to have for yourself. It It is motivational. It is um it is warming, it's endearing, it is powerful, it is empowering. So I think those are the safety and security measures that it does offer, you know, getting it from someone else or wanting to empower yourself. But to get that love for yourself, from yourself, it offers, it benefits you with this glow of confidence anything that anyone does or says to you doesn't bother you and I want to be at that point in life oh my god <laughs> I want to be at that point so bad but it that love for yourself that you give to yourself it it makes you walk in a in a, in a way that intimidates people it makes you walk in a way, and it's not like you're, it's your intent to intimidate people. They just can't believe that you exude all of this. And it's just a mere confidence. That's all it is.
before my video was rudely interrupted by a phone call. Um, where was I? Oh, I was talking about the love that you have that you pour into yourself. Um, it, it, it benefits a lot. Like I said, people may feel intimidated by it, but some may also feel empowered by it. Oh my God, I love the way that she carries herself. I love the way that she, people just love the way that you love on yourself, the way that you do your self care. Oh my gosh, I need to do that regimen. Maybe it'll make me feel better. People get inspired by that. Um, and I was at that point once upon a time and I wanna be back at that point again. So me wanting to love myself, again in the way that I know I can be properly loved by myself is it's now motivating me to get back to that point knowing that I know what I know it's motivating me to get back to what I know and speaking about it makes others like rejoice and it, it brings you joy and it's moving. It's very moving. It's monumental. <laughs> it's iconic. It's legendary. And that's just that on that. So I hope that answers the question of what does love, what safety and security does love offer? Well, happy Queen's over. What safety or security does love offer me? I think I can break that down in uh, two categories as far as like my feelings and my actions. As far as like feelings, I think uh, sharing my ideas and my plans with my significant other or my partner is important. That helps build safety, you know, knowing that this person is helping me walk through or helping me fulfill my journey. You know, um, it's safe to say I can reveal my insecurities or not have to worry about my insecurities i can be me you can be you and we can be each other together and build ourselves um as far as being safe is really important to me is being able to correct the person and not be left with a negative taste in your mouth you know being able to show that person, hey, you're doing such and such and this, and I'm not really liking that, or just being able to express how you feel and not clash. That's really good foundation as far as a safe relationship. Now, as far as security, it's more like actions. Uh, standing firm in a relationship. And what I mean by standing firm is when you set boundaries or when you set rules you know you you abide by them and, and we know that things constantly change in a relationship but there's always foundations that you have to honor amongst each other and lastly is just to fight for each other you know had that person's back thick or thin hot or cold day or night no matter what the issue is knowing that that person can always count on you you can always count on them so as far as feeling secure in a relationship or feeling safe in a relationship those are the things that i feel are most important to me and i think that's what love offers and that's what i look for and that's what i see peace it is in my safety it is in my community in my family in the love i receive for them that i feel safe that i feel secure that i feel like i'm untouchable when I'm out with my friends, I know that nobody could come up and disrespect me because my friends ain't going. Because I'm protected. I'm valued. I am loved. I am safeguarded. I am gatekeeped from people. My community loves me. The people around me, my family loves me. And because of that, I feel safe. I feel secure. I feel protected. I know that I am looked after. Do you know I could never go missing? Because in 3.5 seconds, there are people be looking for me. They will be coming for me. They will be like, I am important and I am valued. And my community shows me that. So not only do I feel that way about myself, but I'm shown that. 
every day and it's in that that I do feel safe that I do feel secure that I even when it feels like the world is shaking I don't know what's next I know that if I don't got shit else I got love and I got people looking out for me wanting me to be well who want to ensure that I'm well who are willing to make certain sacrifices to ensure that I am well and I find safety in that because I feel like everything has a sacrifice. Everything comes at some cost. So to understand that there are things that cost and it's okay for people to make sacrifices to show me their love, I appreciate that. But also acts of service is how I feel loved. So it's when people are showing me that, oh, this is, I want you to have these things. I want you to, someone told me the other day, I was at work, right, at my night job. And I was like, yeah, I can't work on Friday. I got a pop-up. And my the owner was like, what you sell? I was like, I make um, herbal healing. I make the intention oils, teas, herbal remedies. And I sell them at events. He said, so you've been having a business this whole time. You've been working here since June. And you be going to pop-ups to make money. And we have a pop-up every Tuesday. And you don't be in here selling your shit. You don't want to get no money with me. And I felt hit because I knew. What made me feel here is not what he said. It's that I knew that because I don't like to feel ridiculed or feel... Do you know how many times I be up somewhere so somebody and people come to me and be like, so you make magic? Yes, I do! But it's easy for me to feel confident in a space where they're already expecting this of me. I've kind of worked through that uncomfortable situation. Whereas in a new setting where they just know me as Bonnie the server, Bonnie the bartender, Bonnie the money go-getter, and they know me in that light, it can be a little harder for me to be vulnerable about my gifts. And you know, I feel like Erica, I love Erica Badu, but I feel like Erica Badu outdid herself. And she said, keep in mind I'm an artist. And I'm sensitive about my shit. So I felt that to I felt that to the point where I've literally had to change that to my bio on Instagram. And it don't say that keep in mind I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. My shit. It says I'm the art and the artist. It's both. First of all, I regularly create art. Second of all, I am the art. Baby, you don't see this? course you see this <laughs> so I just want for y'all to reflect and wonder and answer what safety and security does love offer you and if you journal if you're a journaler if you want to start journaling if you need a good prompt I want you to answer these questions and really get into it with yourself about your answers um how does the love you are given protect you when you are low do you count your blessings have you ever considered how the love of your spiritual core and higher self have protected you from unknown danger how does the security you receive in your life, whether it be from yourself or your community, sustain you in this life? How does the security of love make you more or less confident in yourself? How does the security of love affect the need or the lack of need to have validation from others? And I feel like I want to, you know, say one few more things. And, um, when you're low, do you count your blessings? That one, that one was the shortest question, but that one holds the most weight. When things go awry, do you count that you are loved? When things are not going the way you plan for them to go, do you count that you are backed by your community? Do you count that when in need, you have people around you to help you? When in need, you have people around you who will listen. When in need, you have people around you who, if they can't do nothing else, they can be a shoulder for you to cry on, a shoulder for you to lean on, a shoulder for you to 
to hold you up. Do you consider that? Do you count your blessings when you are low? Because when I when she get real fucked up, when she get real fucked up, I I I can get mad. But when I get low and I need to start counting my blessings, I start with the fact that I am loved. I'm loved. Not just, and the crazy thing is, I think when we think of community, we think of people. And we only consider people. But when I think of community, I think of the entire earth. Do you know? Do you know that the trees that you have never even come into contact with make oxygen so that you can breathe? Because they love you. Because they operate off love. You don't got to do shit for them. You don't got to come in contact. Did you know that the sun come up to bless you every day and may not even know you by name? But of course the sun knows you by name. Why wouldn't it? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you know that? Do you know that the world wants you to be well? And I don't mean the people in the world. I mean the physical rock floating through space that we are on, built by people who we don't even know. They want you. It wants you. The earth literally is working to provide you with everything it has to offer to ensure that you are of good health. Do you know that? Do you know that literally the stars, the sun, the moon, the earth, the ocean, the trees, the leaves, the wind are all working, to, working together to ensure that you are great, that you are looked after? you are taken care of that you have everything you need to start the day and end it the world does that for you and asks for nothing in return nothing in return do you know that you are that necessary do you know that you are of that value do you know that cosmically there are million year old cosmic systems and celestial beings working at play to ensure that you are great today. Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know that even if man ceased to exist, this cosmic universe would still continue to thrive with or without us? But every day, its systems work to ensure that we are taken care of. Do you know that? So your community is not just the people you know in the places you've been. Your community is this whole ecosystem that you are a part of, that you are valued in. The trees ain't making oxygen on accident for you. It ain't no accident, baby. It's intentional. It's intentional. The sun ain't shining on you on accident, baby. Do you know that? I hope you know that. I hope y'all really, really see the love. It, love is not just about people. And it ain't just about from the outside. It's from within. For thousands, thousands, hundreds, hundreds of billions of billions of years, the sun been shining and gracing us with its presence out of love. It ain't just about motherfucking it just ain't about people, y'all. There is love and security in all the things that the world does for us every day. So start there. If you're looking for love, start with the world. Start in nature. It starts in nature. It starts. I really hope that y'all know how loved y'all are. I really do. And I really hope you know that I love you every voice that hears every ears that hears my voice every voice that responds to me I, I do not take it lightly i love it here with y'all and i hope y'all love it here with me and i mean i do because i keep coming back but it's just like phenomenal it's phenomenal to have a community that supersedes human beings have you never been loved by an animal before baby it ain't no love like the love of them animals that just be happy to see you. And not because you brought food. Have you never been loved by a child before? If you, if you ain't never had kids, have you a kid, baby? Because they love to see you wake up. They think that sun, moon, and earth rise when you smile. 
baby it's so many different types of love out here to fill your cup fill your cup with love it's so many worse things you could fill your cup with so just fill your cup with love and see how life changed for you and see i hope that you can experience if you have not the safety and security that love can provide and there i know there are people who have it and i hope i really really hope that one day y'all do and i really really hope that y'all enjoy the the way that my community responds to this question and the realness that they brought um because they kept it honest and that's a beautiful thing so i'm gonna end this episode with the shits you know my regular with the shits be you not nobody else be you they couldn't be you if they tried and you couldn't be them if you tried so be you because there's power in that so walk in your power because your superpower my superpower anybody's superpower is that they can be you they can be themselves you being you is your superpower because can't nobody else motherfucking do that so own your individuality own who you are own who you are becoming and who you became and who you used to be because all that makes you who you are and nobody else is, could even be that talk so fast um and thrive we have survived long enough we have survived and survived and survived. And now we change the narrative and we choose to thrive. And live every day to its fullest and smile until our cheeks hurt and laugh until our stomach is sore. We thrive. I hope that this, this episode found you well. And made a difference in your day. I will see you next time on the next episode of the Queen Bonnie Talks podcast, hosted by the Queen Bonnie herself. Sending you all my love. Bye.